Hey there, and welcome to another episode of New to Mac on Apple a Day. Today, we're going to look at how to batch rename files using the Finder's built-in rename option. This is useful if you have a bunch of files and you might want to add a prefix or a suffix to the existing file name, or perhaps number them sequentially. Let's jump right in and check out all the features of the rename option. So on my desktop, I have a folder of images, and these image files are named with their original file name assigned by the camera. I'll select them all by going up to the Edit menu and choose Select All, or you can type Command A on the keyboard. Once they're all selected, I'm going to go to the File menu and choose the Rename option. Or you can simply right-click on your selection and choose Rename from the drop-down menu. You're then presented with the Rename Finder Items window. This pop-up right here lets you choose how to rename the selected files. If I click on it, there are three options. Replace Text, Add Text, and something called Format. Let's start at the top with Replace Text. This is the simplest way to rename a group of files. So Replace Text will search for existing text within the file name and replace that with the new text. So in my example, all of these file names start with the letters DSC. I'd like to replace that with the name of the model in this photo shoot. So for Find, I'll enter DSC, and in the Replace With field, I'll type in Julia and a hyphen. On the bottom left of this window, an example is displayed so you can see what your final name will look like. And that's exactly what I want, so I'll click on the Rename button, and almost immediately, all the files selected are renamed. DSC has been replaced with Julia followed by a hyphen. So that's pretty straightforward, a simple find and replace. Now let's look at another example. Here, I have a list of images which don't have anything consistent in the file names in order to use Find and Replace. Each file name is unique. I'll select them all by typing Command A, and then right click and choose Rename from the menu. Note that Rename always remembers the previous settings. So instead of selecting Replace Text, I'm going to choose Add Text. This is pretty simple as well. I type in the text that I want to add. I'll enter Julia and a hyphen again, just like before. And looking at the example, it has put that after the file name. Luckily, you can change that. On the right side of the window, this pop-up menu lets you choose where to add the text. I'll click on it and there's two options, after name and before name. So I'll switch this to before name. And now Julia hyphen is inserted before the file name, which is exactly what I want. I'll click on rename and all of the files have been renamed with the prefix of Julia hyphen inserted at the beginning of each file name. I'm going to undo that by pressing Command Z and then go back into the rename option, and this time I'll put it back to after name so we can add a suffix. I'll change the text to underscore Julia and press rename. And as expected, this appended underscore Julia to each file name. So far, this is pretty basic. We can replace text using find and replace or insert a prefix or append a suffix. Let's move on to the last option called format. I'm going to undo these changes again by pressing Command Z. Right click one more time and choose Rename again. I'll change the rename style to Format. So Format discards the original file name in favor of the new name specified within these settings. If I click on the pop-up menu for Name Format, there are three options. Name and Index, Name and Counter, and Name and Date. So let's start with name and index. This will add a numerical index either after the file name or before the file name. The index will default to start at the number 1, however you can have it start at any number. This is useful if some of the files in a folder have already been renamed with an index and you wish to rename the rest of the files where that index left off. For demonstration purposes, let's set the starting number to 25. So that brings us to the Custom Format field. By default, it is populated with the word File followed by a space. So if you look at the example, the name of the first file will be named File Space 25. Let's change the name to Julia hyphen fashion shoot underscore. I'll click on the Rename button, and you can see all of the files have been renamed by the new file name 
followed by a sequential index which starts at 25. I'll undo that with Command-Z and go back into the Rename option. First, I'll reset the start number to 1, and let's say I don't wish to change the existing file name, but I just want to add an index. You can trick it by leaving the custom format field blank. In the example text, you can see that the original file name is now used. Unfortunately, you're not able to add additional characters such as a hyphen or an underscore, and as soon as you try, the file name is overwritten. It also automatically forces a space between the index and the file name. I'm going to change the Where option to Before Name and click on the Rename button. And now each file has a sequential index inserted as a prefix. So that's all there is for Name and Index. I'll undo that again with Command-Z and then I'll right-click and go back into Rename again. And this time I'll change the Name format to Name and Counter. The only difference between counter and index is that counter creates a five-digit counter, so number one is preceded by four zeros. This is great when you sort a list of files by file name. The file name sort, which is alphabetical, will now be the same as a numerical sort by the counter, whereas with an index, the numbers 1, 10, and 11 would all be next to each other with an alphabetic sort. The leading zeros solve that problem. I'll change the where option to after name and type in Julia hyphen fashion shoot hyphen and press rename. And now we have a file list nicely ordered with the five digit counter. So one more thing about index and counter. How does it know which files to choose for the sequence? If you look at my file list in the finder, these have been sorting the whole time by date modified in descending order. So what happens if I change that sort order? But before I do that, let's take a quick look at the image with counter 00001. I'll select it and press the spacebar to quickly display the image so we know what it looks like. Then I'll undo again with command Z. And then in the finder window, I'll click on the name heading to sort by ascending order. I'll once again select the top image in the list. I'll press the spacebar to view a preview. And clearly it is a different image. I'll select all files with command A right click and select rename and I'm just going to click on the rename button again using the exact same settings. Now if I select the new 00001 file and press the spacebar to see a preview and we can see it's the same first image that was there when we sorted by file name and not the first image when it was sorted by date modified. So what that means is that the finder will use the current visual sort to name the file sequentially when renaming with index and counter. So the lesson there is to make sure that you have the sort order set accordingly before doing a batch rename with index or counter. Okay, I'll undo one last time and go back into rename. I'll switch the name format option to name and date, and this will append a date and timestamp either after or before the specified file name. Notice that the start number is disabled since it's not needed. So you might be thinking, wouldn't that make all the files the same name since the rename happens at the same time? And yes, that makes sense. And to get around that problem, it kind of cheats. I'll click on the rename button and look what it does to the file names. It actually appends an additional index after the timestamp for each file. This is odd since the starting at number option is disabled so it's definitely not using that feature. What appears to be happening is the finder is adding an index and incrementing it in the event of a duplicate file name. The same thing happens when you duplicate a file over and over again. I'll revert the changes again and duplicate their first file. Then I'll select it again and choose duplicate one more time, and then one more time after that. See how it adds an index? Exactly like what happened with the rename process. The original file name with the word copy remains unchanged, but the duplicate of that now has a number 2 appended to it, and the additional duplicate has a number 3, and so on. Just like what happened with the rename process. So in any case, it's kind of an unusual thing to rename files by the current date and time anyway, something I would probably never use. If anyone can specify a use case for that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Okay, so that wraps it up for the rename process in the Finder, an incredibly useful function that I actually just recently discovered. I was still relying on some old Apple scripts I had lying around to do some batch renaming whenever I needed it. This has saved a lot of time. 
If this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple a Day.